Today, we're bringing Apple Silicon to users who need even more extreme levels of performance to unleash their creativity. We're adding one last chip to the M1 family, and it's going to blow your mind. 20 CPU cores, 64 GPU cores, and 32 neural engine cores. Now that is one really cool machine. It felt like an eternity, but Apple finally released the more powerful version of the M1. It's called M1 Ultra, and it's a monster. Even though this is still not the top of the line SoC, there's going to be a new one for the Mac Pro, and I'm sure that's going to be another level of awesome. This one will please a ton of professional users. And since this channel is 3D heavy, let's see what that means for us 3D users. Let's go! The good thing with the M1 line of SoCs and how it scales up is the fact that we can easily predict what kind of performance we can get out of the M1 Ultra. After all, it's two M1 Max chips strapped together. So in Cinebench, in theory at least, we should get double the performance of the M1 Max. If that's going to be true, and I have no reason to doubt it, it will be quite impressive to see, especially because of the fact that this kind of power comes out of this tiny little machine. And because I'm looking to replace my iMac Pro, here's that machine compares to the M1 Ultra. The M1 Ultra absolutely <laughs> destroys the iMac Pro. With 16 CPU performance cores and just 4 efficiency cores, the Mac Studio is focused on performance. Nowadays, of course, everyone's using GPUs to render things out, but there are still a ton of other tasks that are CPU bound. ZBrush, for example, is relying a lot on the CPUs, and if you're working on really high density meshes like 40 million polygons, things will take some time to complete. For example, in my case, because I'm working with 8K textures and polypaint relies on geometry, I need to project really high resolution meshes onto low res ones. This process can take 15 to 20 minutes on my iMac Pro, so my guess is that this process would be cut in half on the Mac Studio. That is going to be a huge time saver. I don't think ZBrush has completely transitioned to M1, so the performance boost might not be that big, but I'm sure it will be soon. So when that happens, I'm going to be all over this machine. So that's the CPU part. Let's check the GPU. For the GPU, they've also doubled the number of cores available. They went from 32 on the M1 Max to 64 cores on the M1 Ultra. And the interesting thing is that Apple now feels more comfortable to compare it to more recent GPUs, and more specifically Nvidia's 3090. I don't want to repeat myself, but it's amazing to see this type of performance coming out of this tiny computer. It sure is chubby and a bit on the ugly side, but it's still much smaller than a regular PC with a 3090 card. Of course, Nvidia's 4090 is right around the corner, but let's not forget how power hungry that card will probably be. Rumors say that it will require anywhere around 450 to 600 watts of power. In comparison, at peak performance, so that means both CPU and GPU and all the other components working, the Mac Studio consumes 370 watts. <laughs> that is quite a difference. And according to Apple, at its peak GPU performance, the M1 Ultra consumes around 100 watts. That's a third of the power compared to Nvidia's 3060. And when compared to the 3090, the M1 Ultra delivers the same performance for much less power. Getting the same type of performance and doing all that while being silent is very impressive. For a Mac user, this computer will be a really cool rendering machine. Of course, it remains to be seen how fast the M1 Ultra's GPUs actually are, but from M1 Max's results, I think it's safe to say that the M1 Ultra will be close to Nvidia's 3090. Apple says that it will surpass it, but let's see. Of course, if you're a PC user with a dual card setup, there won't be any competition there. But for me at least, I'm fine with a system that's reasonably fast. Nowadays, it's so cheap and easy to use a render farm, so having a ridiculously powerful machine is not that important. Especially considering that this machine will consume a ton of power and will also be very noisy. But enough about the GPUs. Let's now talk about something that is not really covered by many, but it's really important. This one is something I'm personally very interested in because the neural engine cores play a huge role in photogrammetry. So if you're into that sort of thing, you will appreciate the extra speed the M1 SoC has to offer. I made a whole video about this, so make sure to watch that if you're a Mac user doing photogrammetry. 
In my test, the M1 Max was twice as fast as my iMac Pro, so the M1 Ultra with double the neural engine cores and GPU cores is going to be four times as fast. <laughs> that to me is mind-blowing. In my test, it took my iMac Pro 25 minutes to produce a 3D object, and now with the M1 Ultra, it will take just a little over six minutes. Six minutes for a high resolution object. <laughs> this type of performance job is going to completely change your work. Imagine having more time for experimentation, producing more assets per day, and having faster delivery times overall. This performance boost alone is worth getting the Mac Studio, for me at least, or anyone who's into photogrammetry and Macs. In Apple's marketing material, Mac Studio looks chubby. For me, it doesn't really matter how the computer looks, but Mac Studio is definitely <laughs> on the ugly side. But I think that Apple might have also messed up with the way they're showing it off. It's not as big or as bulky as it looks. When I checked it in AR to see how it looks on my desk, it doesn't look bad at all. It's a lot shorter than my external hard drive, and it also doesn't look as wide. And just to be absolutely certain that there's not something wonky going on with AR, I double-checked the specs on Apple's website. Mac Studio is just 9.5 centimeters tall, so it's definitely much shorter than I originally thought. Which makes it even more impressive getting this type of power from such a tiny computer. And the most important thing for me is the fact that it's silent. Of course, that needs to be tested, but if the report from M1 Max users are any indication, the M1 Ultra is also going to be silent. But even if it's not completely silent and the fans spin up when the computer is working at 100%, I'm sure it won't be that annoying. I think the computer will be relatively silent. And there's nothing better than working on CPU and GPU taxing stuff in silence. But of course, at this point, I should also mention Apple's fixation with running computers hotter than they should be. And all the problems, uh, of course, that come out of it. The G4 Cube is one example of that. They had really hot components running on a tiny case, and as a result, the machine had several issues. There was cracking on the plastic case, the CPU and GPU were flaking out after some months, and so on and so forth. And most recently, we had the Trashcan Mac Pro, which also had its own set of thermal issues. I have the feeling Apple has learned its lesson and that uh, the Mac Studio will have adequate enough ventilation, but who knows, only time will tell. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I was hoping that we would get a good setup, computer and monitor, for around 7k, but it looks like if you want to go all out, it's going to cost more than that. Not a whole lot, but it's going to be more than 7k. The good news though is that we can certainly get a good setup for 7K. We're going to have to compromise a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, doubling the RAM from 64GB to 128GB is 1000 euros extra. And the same goes for the upgrade of the SoC. If you want to have the extra GPU cores, it's going to cost you. And since rendering and GPU cores go hand in hand, investing the 1000 euros is going to be what you want. I would say overall the price for the Mac Studio and what it offers is quite good. We're essentially getting a Mac Pro for a fraction of the price. Would it be better if it cost a little bit less? Sure, but life's not perfect. I don't have so much problem with Mac Studio's price, but I can't say the same about the monitor. The price for the base model is fine. All 5K monitors I could find are around the same price point, around 1,700 euros. And some of them don't even have the same height resolution as Apple's. LG has the cheapest 5K monitor, around 1,400 euros, and with the exact same resolution as Apple's, but this monitor is quite old, it's known for its poor build quality, and it's also plagued with all sorts of issues. So, knowing all that, Apple's base model is absolutely fine, especially once we take into account that the monitor comes with great speakers, a FaceTime camera, and a frigging processor on top of all that. What I have a problem with is the fact that the height adjusting accessory costs 460 euros more. That's the only problem I have with the display. Height adjustment is one of the most basic features for a monitor, and for Apple's display, it's not built in. It's an extra accessory that comes with a premium price tag. I'm sure it's a very nicely built component, but 460 euros is quite steep. If they knocked out a couple hundred euros from that price, then I think it would have been one of the best monitors out there. 
especially knowing how well Apple color calibrates its monitors. With Apple, you know that you won't get the typical ridiculously saturated colors or insane color shifts. You can trust that what you see in the screen is well balanced, and if you're doing any print work, you won't get any surprises there. If you want to save some money, I think one of the best ways to do that is by buying a third-party monitor. There are some great ones for 800 euros or around that price, but they're all 4K and the color accuracy is debatable. So, I don't know, I'm a little bit divided on this one. I think Apple's monitor is going to be the best choice, but the height adjustment accessory bugs me to no end. All in all though, the price for both the Mac Studio and the monitor is good enough. Keep in mind that this is a setup that's going to be used by professionals, so it's a price tag that is not out of the world, like the 30K Mac Pro for example. For around 7K, you can get a nice, beefy setup. It will have some compromises like 64GB of memory instead of 128, or 1TB of SSD instead of 2, or the lack of height adjustability for the monitor, but if I had this setup right in front of me right now, I would not complain. I would also take into account that VAT is not calculated if you're buying the machine for business use, at least that's what happens in Greece. And then the price is super enticing. The 7K setup will now cost around 5,700 euros. That is a really good price for this setup. All in all, I think Apple knocked it out of the park. The Mac Studio looks like an awesome computer and I think it will please a ton of professionals, not just video editors. And it looks like Apple actually started listening to its customers. For years now, everyone was asking for this kind of setup. A powerful desktop that doesn't come with a screen like the iMac and is not a full-blown powerhouse like the Mac Pro. So finally, after so many years, we got the computer we wanted. Now, of course, you know what that means. We have to wait and see what they will come up with for the Mac Pro. But that is for another day. And I get the feeling the Mac Pro will blow people's minds, not just with a price tag, <laughs> but also the performance. Some rumors say that it's going to be four M1 Max SoCs stacked together, but as Apple already stated, the M1 Ultra is the last M1 processor. So there's going to be something completely new for the Mac Pro. Maybe the Mac Pro is going to be an M2 based system. Who knows, we just have to wait a few more months until we see what Apple has in store. And I certainly cannot wait. Anyway, that is it for this uh, video. Let me know what you think about uh, Mac Studio. Is it all you thought out it would be? Are you going to get it? And if yes, which version? Let me know in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.